Hi, today we're having a go at photographing lesser red poles and I'm using as a perch some elder catkins. Uh, hazel's out at the moment but I prefer elder, it's this dark brown colour. I prefer it to the hazel which are sort of light yellowy green sort of colour. Another advantage of using catkins is when the red poles land on here sometimes they actually start to feed on the catkins. I guess the catkins have to be a, a certain ripeness and I don't know what that is but it's happened to me several times with red poles they land they start to feed naturally and that looks good otherwise the way you attract red poles in is by using niger seed it's the same seed that we use for goldfinches that's what they like so you have to buy these feeders for them special niger seed feeders which are just a perspex tube with little slots cut into them but the big difference is when I go to the corn stores to buy my bird food, I buy the peanuts, the sunflower seeds, the mixed bird seed in large sacks, sort of 20, 25 kilo sacks, because that's the cheapest way of buying it. Don't do that with Niger seed. Niger seed needs to be fresh. And if you buy it and you keep it in storage for months, even if it doesn't go mouldy, you keep it dry, it doesn't seem to be any different to us, but the birds don't like it. They like fresh Niger seed. So I only ever buy it in two kilo packs. This is about one kilo in here now. And just keep topping it up and keeping it fresh. It's very important with Niger seed. Couldn't tell you why and I couldn't tell you how long it lasts. Just keep it fresh. So I've put two sprigs up. I'm using my Wimberley Plamp again to hold the second perch higher. And I'm doing that just to try and avoid the bird on a stick look. I don't want a totally clean background. Hopefully the birds are going to land here behind me. The, well, the camera is actually slightly higher than the video camera there. So I should have a, a grey background behind them. This is another approach to photographing birds. Instead of putting perches out for them by the feeders, move the feeders into the vegetation. So here we've got some bramble, some nice uh, sprigs of bramble coming down. I'm going to hang the feeders on here and then the birds are just going to land on natural perches. So hopefully the red poles, but it'll be other species as well. Okay, so we're all ready to go. I'm going to jump in the hide. I'm going to show you a slightly different way of setting the camera up to I normally do. Um, I like to do slow motion of birds on video, and that's what I'm going to concentrate on today. But whether I use the Panasonic G9 or my Olympus M1X Micro Four Third bodies, as soon as you go into slow motion, you lose autofocus. And for small birds like this, you really need it to autofocus because you haven't got long. When they land on the branch, they're only there for a second or two and then move on. Now you're doing slow motion video, so that one or two seconds lasts a lot longer. But nevertheless, it's nice to have a way of autofocusing before you press the video button, which can be done. So although I want to take slow motion video, I start off in stills mode and I have the camera set to continuous autofocus and bird tracking. Then I go into the menus, I scroll down to the video settings, across to the right, down to specification settings, across to the right, and now change the frame rate to the high speed mode, 120 frames per second. Now once that's set, every time I press the shutter release button, it autofocuses on the bird's head and eye, but then when I press the red video button, it jumps into video mode, but it's already focused on the bird's eye. Now if the bird moves, the autofocus won't follow it, but at least you've started off with it sharp without having to manually focus. I'll do that again because I need to change the composition slightly because the picture does go cropped when you go into video mode. So we're starting off at that image size. As soon as I press the red button, it goes in much tighter. You have to bear that in mind when you do this, but it does save me having to manually focus initially. So this is taken at normal speed and then the autofocus works anyway but now in slow motion and this is where I've put the feeders into the hedge 
so the background is a little bit messy we've got twigs in front of the bird you know that would completely spoil a stills picture but I find with video it, it still works but this is 120 frames per second which is roughly about five times slow and the same for this shot but again on each occasion started off in stills mode auto focused on the bird and then hit the video button so it goes into slow motion long tail tit at normal speed and this is unusual for a long tail tit to stay on a perch this long in fact it's probably a world record for a long tail tit so in slow motion and also in the hedgerow where I've pushed the feeders in so a far more natural look to it and the blue tit at normal speed and then slowed down so now I'll show you a few of the pictures I took of the lesser red poles when they landed on the catkins and they did attempt to feed as well this bird was just having a peck at them didn't seem to like them I guess they weren't at that right stage of ripeness there's all sorts of red poles hoary red poles and mealy red poles common red poles I tend to assume they're all lesser red poles when I'm looking at them in the UK I have photographed other species or subspecies or races when I've been abroad changing the perch slightly and some older pictures on different catkins this will be silver birch and what I did here was transported a complete branch across so instead of just one twig a complete branch and there you can see it's feeding on the catkins Thanks for watching.